Hey guys, Ty here. Whoa, I am zoomed in, there we go. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create really high quality time lapses using a small trigger system that we're gonna build uh, for your Bamboo Lab P or X series printers. You're gonna need to have a trigger port on your camera and this will work with either a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Most cameras have the remote trigger port on them. We're gonna be building it using a very inexpensive little limit switch, a little custom 3D printed mount that I made and a magnet and it's not intrusive so you're gonna be able to remove uh, the uh, trigger from your printer so you can move them back and forth between printers if you have multiples it's super simple really inexpensive less than 30 bucks for all the material that you're gonna need and you're gonna get way better time lapses than the built-in cameras uh, in the bamboo printers here so let's go ahead and we'll jump over we'll do a quick top-down shot and I'll show you exactly how to assemble it very very simple this whole video should be like less than five minutes long. So let's go ahead and uh, put the uh, trigger together. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need and how to assemble everything and kind of how all the wiring and everything works. It's super simple though, anybody can do this. First, you're gonna need this little uh, limit switch right here. I got these on Amazon for, I think six for $7. Uh, and I picked this design because it's small. I like the low profile and uh, I figured this would be the best. So then I designed this little mount around it. And I actually did a few iterations with different depths and angles, but this is the one that works the best. And then you're gonna need this little one inch cut magnet magnet just like this right here and I'll provide links to everything down below the maker world link for the model and then Amazon links for the uh, limit switch right here and then I can also provide a link for the camera trigger cable right here uh, so this is for a Canon camera though so you might want to look if you've got a Sony or you use a different port uh, a lot of cameras will use this two and a half millimeter jack as support into the camera uh, and then it goes off to either like a physical button or maybe an extension cable. The Canon actually uses this proprietary plug and then this cable came with an extension so I can plug this in here. So I stripped the other end of the extension. Your cable might just be one long cable. You'll see you're just gonna wanna strip one end of it off, the end that does not plug into your camera. So the other end and all these trigger cables work the same way. They're all pretty basic. Let's get this in focus. So you've got your red, which is gonna be your primary cable and then you're gonna have two other wires. Your colors may vary on your cable but in this one and you can test them just by touching them together while it's plugged in and see what it does with your camera uh, the red and the yellow at least on this cable they will actually trigger a photograph so it will take a picture if I short out the red and the white it will autofocus the camera I'm gonna show you how to set this up so it does autofocus and triggers but for me I'm not gonna deal with the autofocus I set my camera's depth of field really deep so that everything inside the print chain is in focus. Here's how the limit switch works. It's super simple. When the limit switch closes, this top pin and this middle pin short out. So when this goes like this, if you've got your red on the top and your yellow in the middle here, when this button clicks, it's going to snap a photograph. When this limit switch is open, you have a circuit between this bottom pin and the top pin. So here's how you would wire it if you wanted it to autofocus. You would put the red on the top right here and then you would put the white on this middle pin and then the yellow on the bottom pin. And what would happen is when your print head moves back, it's gonna hit this button and it's gonna short these out and it's gonna uh, autofocus. Then as soon as this releases, it's gonna snap a photograph. As long as you don't have the drive on your camera set to do like rapid fire photos, when you press a button like grrr, um, it will just do the one shot. So if you have it set to single shot, it's just gonna take the one photograph. And then basically this button is pressed the whole time while it's printing but it's only taking that one photograph and then when it comes back it's gonna press this it will release your camera trigger and it will focus the camera again and then as soon as it releases it'll snap another photograph but to keep things simple for me I'm just going to wire the red to the top pin right here and then the yellow to this middle pin and I'm gonna solder this together and just use a little heat shrink once that's all soldered together you're just going to friction fit this in I've got this all backwards. Okay, here we go. It goes in like that. 
So then it's going to be in like this, and this is going to get magneted uh, attached inside of the printer. And I'll show you exactly where it goes. And then you're going to want to bend this arm just a little tiny bit. You can fine tune it once it's in the printer. So I'll go ahead and wire this back up. I had it put together, but I tore it apart so I can make this video really quick. I'm going to put this back together and then we'll jump over to the printer and I'll show you exactly where it goes and then how to set it up so that you can do your time lapses. So here I'm going to show you how to put the adapter in your printer and how it all kind of works once it's all assembled. So now we've got it assembled. Here it is in the printer. I'll go ahead and just pop that out. So make sure that there, you don't want to glue this into the adapter. You want this to have just a little bit of wiggle room so it can kind of move a little bit. So just get it in here and then it's going to go all the way back here right over the motor. So right there. And then you're probably going to want to bend the lever down just a little bit. I'll show you here. So I've got mine bent about like that and then it just fits right in here and you want it kind of going as far over right as you can. You don't want the uh, lever or the limit switch hitting the plastic on the side. You want it hitting the carbon rod. But this is as far back as these rods will move. It, the, the whole thing's being stopped by the printer frame. It's not being stopped by this. Here you just know that it's not going to be pressing against the carbon rods any harder than it needs to to just activate that limit switch, which is just a slight soft touch. So it's not going to cause any damage to the limit switch. And with it all the way over to the right here, you've got plenty of room for the print head to move and clear it and it won't hit this. And then you can just slide uh, the glass back over right on top of it like that and have it kind of creep out the back. So it looks all nice and tidy. And then there you go. And then this is kind of the setup I have just in case you're curious. I do the ring light with the camera here and then I'll actually take an LED light and set it on top too. So I've got some light firing straight down. But there you go. Now you'll be able to do some nice high quality time lapses. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions.